hello viewers today we're going to be cleaning and servicing this Titan rival heater this is a very powerful very good quality heater much more reliable and much safer than any of the ones you can buy today and these will run for quite a few decades if you keep them cleaned and lubricated fairly simple to do so. We're going to start on the back and we're going to remove the four screws around the back. is this piece and we have four more to release the bottom should have access to most of the unit. All the guts stay within the top. You slide this out up here. Now well, it's not going to slide out exactly because it's got the strain relief on there. The opening is too small. Um, yeah, it's pretty dusty in there. Let's see if we can take this off. These are kind of a nuisance to remove, these strain reliefs. Uh, the best way to open this is probably going to be to try to push it through this way. And there's a little tab on the bottom that tab that tab on the bottom is the piece that kind of compresses and pushes through so we're going to try to compress it back and push it back through it takes a little bit of effort usually to get these to uh, go back through. This one doesn't seem like it'll be too bad. There we go. That wasn't bad at all. Okay. So now the rear and bottom cover is removed. And we have the fan. And we have the element. Now the fan is removed by these two bolts here. And there's a there's nuts on the other side that's secured in place. This is not the best design because it's kind of difficult to hold the nuts on the inside, but it's not terrible. And nuts just kind of drops in there as a washer too.
motors are going to start falling apart here. You get the rear bearing, the stator, and then the rotor and the blade. The blade is just press fit on there. If you hold the blade and turn this back and forth and pull it slowly, it'll come right off. You want to be careful not to bend the blade so it doesn't get out of balance. What's the blade look like? It's a very substantial blade for something of this size. It's quite dusty, so we'll get that cleaned out. And the shaft is also very dirty, so we're going to get that cleaned out as well. Now, what we're going to have to do in this case, because the, the shaft is all rusted, I'm going to reassemble the motor momentarily so that we can power it on to clean the shaft a little bit easier. And we need to clean the shaft off in order to remove the front bearing. If you remove the front bearing while the shaft is all rusted, you'll damage the bearing. Okay, so here we have the motor itself, which we're going to lube, uh, clean. And I want to put this on just via, and then we'll turn this on, and we'll plug this back in. And I'm sure we'll get stupid commentary about how you shouldn't service things that are plugged in, but it's a bunch of baloney, because sometimes you have to. This is one of them cases. I'm going to put my meter here just to make sure that we're not... Oops, jeez. Expecting that to happen. Um, just to make sure that we're not drawing heat. Um, 34 watts, so we're good. We're not, um, we're not heating. Alright, so I'm going to put this up like this. I'm going to grab some sandpaper. And I'm just going to sand down the shaft a little bit. This is a uh, relatively fine sandpaper. It won't take too much to get it off. Just want to get all the rust off of there. Get the dust off as well. And see like it's shiny right there. You want to get the whole thing to be shiny again so that we can slide the bearing right off the shaft. Okay, now go to a finer grit to finish it off. Okay. And now the shaft is clean. So with a clean shaft, we'll be able to slide the motor or bearings rather, right off the motor. See that slid right off with ease. So now we can service that. 
we have to be mindful if the motor goes in like this. If you put it in the wrong direction, the fan will spin backwards, uh, which is going to be unacceptable in this design. Okay, so let's do a little bit of cleaning here. This seems to be a very dry, powdery dust, so I'm just going to wipe it off. That one's kind of dirty. Let's use a cleaner one. And we'll just get all the loose dust off of there, that's all. Don't need to do much beyond that. Do need to pay attention to these thrust washers that sit on either side of the rotor. Make sure those don't get lost. Okay, now we definitely want to make sure that we don't have dust just kind of sitting in the element either. That could certainly be a hazard. I think all that dust is kind of stuck on there a little bit, so we'll just turn it off with the brush. Get all the dust off with the vents here. These are the nuts that secure the fian. Two bolts, two washers, you know. Bolts, they're washers. Here's the other one. It's in here somewhere. Here it is. Okay. Make sure we look at both sides of the unit. This side is pretty good too. That's most of the dust out of there. It's not perfect, but the elements are clean. So, it's good enough. Water is clean. This could probably benefit from somewhat of a wet cleaning, but I just don't feel like doing that right now. It's very cold today. This is good enough. Okay. So now we need to lubricate the motor, which is a very important step, and a lot of people seem to skip this. Here's the bearings. And we need to put oil around each of the bearings. So we have, uh, I'm going to use this oil, this is the 
Zoom Spouts 3-in-1 oil. Or, this is not 3-in-1 oil. This is the 3-in-1 oil. You can use this oil in the blue can, which is for fiends. Or you can use the Zoom Spout oil. i got to get some more of this. Um, this is for electric motors. Which, of course, is what's in the, in the heater here. So We're going to take the oil, and we're going to put it in this felt like material which is around the bearing and that will kind of soak in start with like two drops per uh, per opening here I'll take a third with these. Let's go to three. Maybe four. It was pretty dry. I don't think this has been oiled in a long time. Let's take it a fifth in. Alright, this should be good enough. That's a lot of oil. That should be good for a couple seasons. We'll wipe up the excess here so it don't leak inside the unit. Okay, and now we're ready to reassemble the motor. So, again, paying attention to the way the motor goes in here is important so that the fan is going the right direction. It's going to sit in here like this. So that means the long portion of the shaft will go in there like that. This was all pretty dried and clean, but I'm going to wipe this off anyways just to get any old sticky oil residue off of there to dry it out. Looks pretty good. And as I reassemble this, I'll put a drop of oil on each side here. Now one of these is threaded, one of them is not. This is the one that's threaded inside here, so this is the front. I don't really want the oil on the on the front too much. Put a drop of oil on the back. Now these screws, you don't want to put them too far through because you still got to deal with the 
nuts and bolts that are going to hold it in place. So I only put them through like maybe that much. Um, actually, you know what? I have to put them all the way through in order to align the, the bearings correctly. Okay, now you're going to find that the bearings are a bit stiff. Take a screwdriver and just strike the shaft a couple times, move it in and out, up and down. It'll free right up. Yeah, it's running pretty free now. The blade. This is the front, this is the back. So the back goes on the motor like that. I'm going to spin it up real quick just to make sure that it's, um, it's going the right way. Pretty sure I put it back together correctly, but let's just confirm. Yep, it is. Okay, so now we gotta take the blade back off and we gotta put the motor in here. And this is the only really tricky part is that we have to get these bolts onto the other side, which can be kind of flaky. So this goes on here like this and then the, the agitating part is getting this washer onto the uh, the screw and then getting this bolt onto the screw Okay, I just dropped it in there. I'll grab the other one. I'm not going to get agitated by that because it's not going to make the project go any easier. Just going to try again. a great deal of difficulty getting this to start threading. I don't understand what's going on here. It definitely goes.
bolt is simply refusing to thread and that's because I'm turning it in the wrong direction that's what all the difficulty was okay So this round we can use a little wrench, it's too big, I have to use an adjustable one. Ah, these are small, I'll just use this. Let's go in here and tighten these up a little bit. They don't have to go very tight, just enough to keep the motor in place. better to, it's not impossible to do it once it's in place, but it would have been better to slip the blade on before securing the motor all the way. And this can be kind of tricky because you got to make sure that you don't bend the blades at all, otherwise they'll get all out of alignment. So I'm, I'm trying to push from the center of the hub down as much as possible. really pulling on the blades themselves at all. It should go down just to have a little bit of space on the front and you can see the the alignment on this blade look at the tips they're all generally at about the same distance a little bit far forward. I'll pull that one back of here. Um, Alright, so let's power this on and make sure that it's working correctly. It is. The spin down is decent. quiet, no rattling or anything like that. So we should be good as far as that's concerned. Okay. That's pretty much all there is for servicing on this thing. So let's go ahead and reassemble. We have to deal with this pesky uh, strain relief thing on the cord again. before we put it back together, make sure all the loose dust is out of there. Go 
goes back in much easier than it comes out. Okay, now all that's left to do is screw it back together. Put the screws in all the way tight at first because you gotta kind of finagle this thing shut. Once everything looks like it's aligned pretty good, which it is, we can screw everything together tight. Not very tight because it's only sheet metal, it'll strip easy. together. Let's power this on and make sure it's the working. Okay, the fan is running and there's a good amount of air coming out. It is getting hot, high heat, what is draw is reasonable, it's getting hot, so we're good here, everything is working correctly. To cool off for another second and then we'll turn it off. It's almost cool. Okay, this is ready. For the winter, 